Hello and welcome to Sync and Flow, the podcast with me, your host, Josie Thorne. I am a red tent woman circle facilitator, a womb healer and feminine empowerment coach. I have been guiding women to embody their true essence through womb activations and feminine embodiment practices. I started Sync and Flow to help educate and connect women back to the wisdom of their sacred womb space and cyclical nature. I want to help all women reawaken to the true power of the feminine that lives deep within them so that they may cultivate a relationship to self that is rooted in pure trust, divine love and a deeply intuitive connection to the body. Thank you for being here and taking the time to listen to this podcast episode. I hope you enjoy. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to another episode of Sync and Flow, the podcast with me, your host, Josie Thorne. I'm so excited that you have decided to join us because today's podcast episode is one that I am super duper passionate about. As you can probably guess, I'm going to be talking about, drumroll, periods, one of my favorite, favorite topics. I love talking about periods just because there is so little information and education in the mainstream education systems that we grow up in and we grow up with that really prepares us to understand the depth at which We need to know our bodies, okay? We are actually disempowered from knowing our bodies and being intimate with our bodily processes, especially as women. We are only really taught the very surface level, very reductionist, very simplified um, explanations of what is going on at the deeper level, below the surface and within our body, especially around our menstrual cycle, we are not properly informed and we are not given the foundation from which to understand our menstrual cycles and really be empowered in in this information, be empowered in this understanding. We are so limited from being empowered in knowing about our bodies and because of this this is why we are so quick to seek external fixes for internal problems because we're not empowered and we're not given the resources and tools to know how to heal ourselves and this is why I'm here because I want to empower every single woman to start her womb healing journey and to empower herself with this wisdom and knowledge that should actually be accessible and available for every single woman and womb bearer on this planet because this is fundamental information this is fundamental knowledge that we should learn in schools that we should learn in life orientation what a fucking useless subject no I'm not going to be a mandrax slash crack cocaine addict I would like to know and learn about my fucking body is that so hard to ask And so it really just shows the extent to which we live in a patriarchal culture. Living in a patriarchal culture means that all of us have grown up with patriarchal conditioning, which means that we have grown up with the subconscious belief being constantly programmed to us and at us that women are weak, the feminine is weak. Um, It is unsavory to be sexually expressed. It is not womanly to be empowered in our eroticism. It is not, you know, womanly to talk about periods and blood and cervical fluid and juices and you know, it's, it's all these subjects, they are taboo. And there's a reason that they are taboo. Because anything that the patriarchy makes taboo, 
you know that there is a shitload of power in that subject and you know there's a shitload of um, self-actualization within that topic because why else would they keep these subjects from us? Why else would they prevent women being empowered in their own God-given body wisdom? There's only one reason and that is the fact that the patriarchy wants to keep women disempowered. It wants to keep women disassociated from their bodies, disconnected from their womb power, their shakti power, and just being in a victim mentality towards their own health. And this is so often what I see with women is because we haven't been given these foundational, fundamental um, education about our bodies and the ways that our bodies actually work, um, we seek these answers outside of us. Anytime we have a health issue or a health crisis or, you know, any kind of problem relating to our womb and our periods, we constantly will seek this external help or this external um, quick fix solution to our problems because we haven't been personally empowered as women to understand our own issues from the inside out. And unfortunately, we live in a world still in 2023 where men in power are making decisions about women's bodies. And that is just so fucked up because a man can never know what it is like to be in a woman's body. A man can never know, just like a woman can never know what it's like to be in a man's body. You know, it goes both ways. And so we have to have the reverence for our own bodies and for the bodies of the opposite sex. And we have to be humble enough to know and to admit that we actually don't really know that much about our bodies and the ways that our bodies work. And so my role as a womb healer is to empower you, the womb bearer, the woman, the woman, to be able to understand what is going on with your womb. What is your womb trying to communicate to you? Why are you having these issues? How are these issues serving your awakening and self actualization process? Because in order to come out of that victim mentality with our health, the whole, why is this happening to me? Why is my body against me? You know, all of these narratives that put us into a space of victimhood. And we need to turn the narrative around and ask ourselves, how is this happening for me instead of how is this happening to me? Because everything that happens to you is actually happening for you. And everything that happens to you is an opportunity for you to increase your self-awareness and take more self-responsibility for your physical health, your emotional health, your mental health, and your spiritual health. The health of these four pillars is so vital to the overall health and liveliness and wellness of our entire mind, body, soul complex. Because we're not just a body, and we're not just a mind, and we're not just a soul. We are the combination of all three of these. And it's really important to understand that all bodily processes and, you know, the level of health and, at which we can attain is dependent on the interrelated connections between our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health, and our spiritual health. Really, you are not a healthy person until all four of these things are in balance. So today, we are speaking about how, babe, your period cramps are not normal. Period cramps are very common. Almost every single woman will experience some form of cramping. And so they are common, and because they are common, we think that they are normal, when actual fact, they are not normal and they are not natural. Pain-free periods is the natural way. Pain-free periods is the normal way. But unfortunately, 
pain-free periods is so far out of most of our reality that it doesn't actually seem like it's possible. So most of us will just accept that period cramps are part of our reality and then, you know, avoid healing them by using painkillers, by going on hormonal contraception, um, and really just avoiding healing the root cause. I am not against women being on hormonal contraception, but I am against women thinking that hormonal contraception is the answer to their health problems. It makes me so fucking angry when gynecologists suggest that women go on hormonal contraception as a way to fix their period problems. There is really nothing that makes me more angry. An old client of mine told me that she's still battling with very severe cramps and she went to go see her gynae and the gynae suggested to her going on a hormonal contraceptive device. And the gynae did this before even asking the patient whether she wanted to test her her hormones. Okay, this is just crazy for me that before even testing hormone levels, looking at lifestyle, looking at diet, looking at levels of toxicity and mineral balance, nutrient balance within the body, the gynae suggested an external solution, a solution that is perpetuated by Big Pharma. And this is how deeply embedded Big Pharma is with the, the Western medical system. And yes, we need Western medicine. It has, you know, allowed us as humans to progress. But the protocols that Western medical doctors offer their patients are often in service of Big Pharma. But do not address the root causes of the issue within the body. And so the issues perpetuate themselves if the root cause is not addressed. And so we have to really start to ask these questions and look below the surface because any gynae that cares about your health and wants you to live your best life will not offer hormonal contraceptives as the first option, you know? Why aren't we doing hormone tests? Why aren't we looking at, you know, inflammation in the body? Why aren't we looking at trauma? Why aren't we looking at lifestyle? Why aren't we looking at um, exposure to toxins within the household? It just really blows my mind that these very, to me, obvious solutions are ignored by western medical doctors who jump straight to the point of call of get this hormonal contraceptive it will help you it will balance your hormones and this is another thing that makes me so angry is that hormonal contraceptives do not balance your hormones what they actually do is they delete your hormones they delete your cycle altogether they do not get to the root issue. And that's why going on hormonal contraceptives will never heal your period problems because the way that hormonal contraceptives work is that they suppress ovulation and basically stop your body from naturally producing its own hormones. And the reason so many women suffer to get their period back after coming off hormonal birth control is the fact that your body actually forgets how to produce its own hormones and so you actually end up ruining your own hormonal health by going on contraceptive not to mention the fact that estrogen and progesterone the main sex hormones in the female body are so fucking vital for so many bodily functions other than making babies other than our fertility you know, estrogen, for example, is really important for bone density and not ha having your body produce natural estrogen is going to subject you to arthritis at an earlier age. You know, these are the risks. Whereas progesterone is an anti-anxiety hormone. And so by not having your body produce natural levels of progesterone, you're going to be putting yourself at risk for increased levels of anxiety and depression okay there are so many different reasons I'm, i can't get into all of them now but i will at a later stage write a blog post about 
all the reasons why you need to be having natural cycles. So let's get back to period cramps. Period cramps are not normal, they are just common. We've been made to believe that they are normal. The womb is an emotional center, it is the sacral chakra. The womb on an energetic level controls the emotional processings of our body. The womb also acts like an energetic and emotional sponge, which means that it absorbs all unprocessed emotions, experiences, and trauma that are sitting in our body. Because the womb is the epitome of the feminine principle within the body. And so the feminine principle is to receive, to take in, and so the womb will absorb all of these unprocessed emotions, unprocessed traumas, and will store these subconscious beliefs. The womb is a very psychosomatic organ. What does psychosomatic mean? It speaks about the ways that the mind influences the body and the body influences the mind. The beliefs that we hold, the subconscious beliefs that we hold, determine the ways that our body expresses itself and the ways that our body functions. This means that the womb is heavily influenced by the subconscious programming and beliefs that we hold towards our womb and towards our menstrual cycle and towards our feminine energy. Because the womb, like I said, is the epitome of the feminine body. To be able to give birth and bring life forth into this world is the epitome of what it means to be a woman, living in a woman's body. And the menstrual cycle is the epitome of feminine energy, you know, the cyclical nature. And so if we hold negative beliefs and subconscious beliefs, unconscious beliefs around our feminine energy, whether we think it may be weak, whether we have been, you know, taught to believe that being a woman is lesser than being a man. And these are the types of conditionings that we will have received as children growing up in patriarchy, as little girls. It is not always so direct, but these are, because of the cultural, social climate that we live in, these are the beliefs that we would have absorbed through friends, through uncles, aunts, parents, teachers, guardians, whoever, you know, we will have absorbed negative connotations and perceptions about the feminine and what it means to be a woman. The womb is deeply influenced by these energetics. These beliefs that we hold, these subconscious beliefs, which means that it's not actually accessible through our conscious mind, these beliefs are very deep and very ingrained into our psyche. And so the only way to get to these beliefs is by doing deep shadow work and working deeply with your unconscious and subconscious mind, okay? Because I've said many times before, the subconscious mind is programmed between the ages of zero to seven. And after that, the subconscious mind actually starts making 95% of your daily decisions and actions. And so any subconscious processes, which means processes that happen in the body without you having to think about them, such as menstruation, those processes will hit those subconscious beliefs kind of like a limiting belief it's like it hits it and it, it and it kind of blocks that process from unfolding how it's supposed to because the mind is so fucking powerful and has the psychosomatic effect on the body we create our own reality with the thoughts that we hold not the conscious thoughts but the subconscious unconscious thoughts that we hold the womb will speak to us and communicate to us through sensations, whether they be pleasurable or painful. Period cramps are the psychosomatic effect, i.e. the result of unprocessed or stuck trauma and emotions in the body. Most of these unprocessed emotions and trauma relate to the shame that we as young girls felt it, while experiencing our first bleed, our first period called menarch. During this very sacred initiation from girl to woman, we felt shamed. 
We felt like we had to hide it. We felt like we had to go through it alone. We had to keep it secret. We had to stress about not getting blood on our clothing and walking around in public with blood stains on our pants and skirts. The shame that was put on us from the outside world. Because shame is not a natural, organic human emotion. Shame has to be learnt. Shame has to be taught. And it can only be placed on you from the outside in. It has to be placed on you through an external force. Putting you down. Shaming you and making you feel like you have to hide and feel ashamed for this natural, organic, beautiful, life-giving process. We had to hide it and go it alone. And that is just sad. We need to support young girls to feel empowered in their periods. Because whether we received this shameful messaging from a specific person, family member or mentor, or if not that, then it was absorbed from the, the society around us that told us that periods are dirty, periods are shameful, periods are taboo, we have to hide it, we have to keep it secret. It is a private matter that you need to sort out all on your own and never speak about it outside of your own private space. This is what conditioned us into hating our menstrual cycles because we as young girls were not supported in the emotional spiritual ways that we were needed to during this massive massive life initiation from a girl to a woman. The womb's way of alerting you to this is through your pain. Your pain is a messenger from your womb. Your pain is the way that your womb is trying to communicate with you and unfortunately we don't often pay attention until something is screaming at us and this is why we experience period cramps because our womb is trying to communicate to us that there is something not right there is something unbalanced there is something out of alignment within our mind body soul complex that is preventing us from having blissful pain-free periods and most of the time that block is unprocessed trauma and condition negative conditioning towards the feminine and the stuck trauma and unprocessed emotions has a ripple effect on your whole body because it starts as these um, energetic concepts that we hold and slowly it ripples down the slope and unbalances our hormones and disconnects us from our feminine energy which rules the entire menstrual cycle. Our feminine energy is the, the principle ruler or commander of our menstrual cycle and so if we have a negative relationship to our, our feminine energy then of course we will have imbalanced hormones then of course we will experience painful periods then of course we will experience a disconnection from our womb from our body from our periods then of course we are going to be experiencing pain and disconnection and disassociation in sex and this is why after seven years of being on the pill I was able to get my natural period back just two months after coming off the pill because I engaged during my Red 10 facilitator training, I engaged in very deep practices to heal my relationship to my feminine energy and to my womb. And by healing this relationship to my feminine energy, everything else starts to fall into place. My hormones balance themselves out naturally without any external help or support from doctors. My life force was able to heal my body and I was able to experience the bliss of bleeding and having a natural cycle without pain because I healed my feminine energy and my relationship to my feminine energy from the inside out healing myself with my body's own life force energy which actually comes from the womb
your feminine energy really is the foundation for the way in which your womb functions because your womb is also so deeply related to your sex life and the way that you are able to receive the energy of another penetrating you so yeah it's it goes so deep it really really does so if we cannot receive our own love if we cannot receive our own feminine energy if we cannot receive the wisdom of our womb because our womb is always trying to communicate with us our womb wants to be in connection with us okay our womb has its own divine intelligence if we are not taking the time to receive and listen to this divine intelligence then we will experience imbalanced hormone period cramps especially are the result of an estrogen to progesterone imbalance. Too much estrogen, too little progesterone. The cramps are actually caused by these hormones called prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are necessary and are used by the uterus during menstruation to help it contract and help it move the blood from the uterus out the cervix, down the vaginal canal, and out the body, okay? These prostaglandins are needed for these contractions to take place. When you have too much estrogen, excess estrogen will create excess prostaglandins. Too much prostaglandins will actually make your womb contract on a painful level. It will make your womb contract too much and so that is that is why we experience period cramps it's it's multi-layered um the hormone imbalance doesn't act separately to the trauma and emotional effect the psychosomatic effect it's all linked because we have been conditioned through the Western medical system to compartmentalize these parts of the body, such as the brain acts independently and thinks independently, the body acts and thinks independently, the womb is separate on its own little thing here, and then the heart is here, and then this and this and this. It doesn't work like that. All of our body, our whole body works as one big cohesive system. And so it's like a ripple effect. One impact of trauma or of an unprocessed stuck emotion um, can have a ripple effect and imbalance our hormones and cause all these other things to happen. Unprocessed trauma stuck in the body increases your cortisol. It increases your stress response. Cortisol is a stress hormone and basically this unprocessed trauma means that your nervous system is stuck in a fight, flight or freeze response. And this can happen at a very, very subtle level. We may not even know that we are stuck in this sympathetic nervous system response okay we may not even know that that is happening we may seem fine on the outside but on a deeper somatic level we are extremely dysregulated nervous system dysregulation leads to more cortisol being produced in the body because any stress response will elicit cortisol to being produced in the body and cortisol is actually made from progesterone and progesterone stores get depleted every time cortisol is made which allows for estrogen and progesterone to become unbalanced so we have too much estrogen and too little progesterone so how can we heal our period cramps it really is a multi-layered um process it is going to require you to show up for yourself in new ways. It's going to require you to change your lifestyle and also change the narratives and stories you have about your self-care and about the relationship you have to your period and to your womb. So I actually wrote out this healing period cramps protocol 
and if you are one of my clients this is something that I will go in depth with you but I will just um, skim over it and summarize because it's quite long and in-depth. So we need to be eating anti-inflammatory foods to lower our estrogen. These are leafy greens, fatty fish, berries, and we can also look into seed cycling, which is about using different seeds, eating different seeds such as pumpkin and sesame and sunflower at different times of our cycle, which help to balance our hormones. We need to keep our body warm during menstruation. This is vital. We need to do gentle exercise in our luteal phase, the week before our period. And we also need to focus on stress reduction. Like I said, we need to lower our cortisol production in the body by doing mindfulness-based stress reduction practices and exercises. Heal cyclical living and cycling consciously is a really big part of healing our period cramps and deepening our relationship to our womb space so that we may cultivate a positive, loving relationship. You can listen to episode four of the podcast to learn more about cyclical living. We can also work ritualistically with our blood. We can collect it in a moon cup and release it with diluted water, with a sacred prayer for support and healing into the earth, on a tree, in your house plants. Really make this a special and unique ritual that works for you. On my YouTube channel, I have a free audio heart womb meditation that you can do as regularly as possible to connect with your womb space and heal your period cramp. This meditation has helped me to deeply heal my period cramps and to just create more softness and gentleness because another reason we experience cramps is that the womb is tight and it's tense and it's holding all this emotion and trauma that hasn't been processed for the last maybe ever. So the meditation helps you by teaching you how to breathe into your lower abdomen, into your lower pelvis, into the space surrounding your womb. You actually breathe into your womb and by breathing into your womb, and sending your loving, self-compassionate heart chakra energy into your sacral chakra, into your womb space, you actually breathe space and you breathe love and you breathe compassion into this area. And through that energy and through the breath, the womb can actually soften. Because with every breath, we can allow ourselves to <sighs> soften and and relax and sink into that softening of the exhale. And we can do the same for the tension surrounding the womb. And this heart womb meditation really allows us to heal our womb with our own love and our own life force energy. Talking about softening the womb space, this brings me to my next cramps protocol step, which is yoni steaming. For severe cramps, I suggest yoni steaming once a week, every week, and then the week before your period, two to three times that week. And then for my Mild cramps, I suggest steaming two to three times or one to two times in the week before your period. And with yoni steaming, you can really use any herbs that have anti-inflammatory properties, antioxidant properties, and are just generally good for the womb and for the reproductive health of the female body. And I will get into those herbs in a minute. Having hot baths is an amazing way to help decrease inflammation in the womb while on your period. I suggest on days one to three, of you can soak for at least an hour to an hour and a half and just calming yourself in the bath bath, meditating, doing the heart womb meditation in the bath is one of my favorite practices and listening to sacral chakra by neural beat to just calm your nervous system and help you connect to yourself and to the moment and to your body. Really giving your space self the space to bleed and the time and the rest 
to bleed is so important. This will also overall impact your experience of having a period. So rest is another very, very, very important factor for while you menstruate. Magnesium is also a powerful relaxant and cramp relief, and you can take it daily the week before your period as well as during your period. I also like to personally put Epsom salts into my bath when I do, when I soak, and that will also help um, get magne magnesium into your system. Then we need to look at your hormonal health. So have you had your hormones checked? And I suggest having your hormones checked by a functional medicine doctor who is a holistic, who has a holistic approach. Um, I suggest going to a naturopath or a homeopath, but maybe a naturopath to start with, and they will give you a balanced and holistic perspective and understanding because you also for different hormones you need to test at different phases of your cycle day five is a really good day to get your blood checked for hormones and then you need to test for estrogen before you ovulate and then again for progesterone after you ovulate Okay, if you need any recommendations for naturopaths in Cape Town, please reach out to me. We then also need to look at our gut health because our gut health has a massive contribution to our hormonal health. And so, like I said, you need to consult a functional medicine doctor who has a holistic approach to gut health and isn't just going to put you on probiotics because we, yes, we do need to take probiotics, but probiotics are not the only solution to fixing our gut health. You may also be dealing with something more severe such as endometriosis which is a chronic autoimmune disease whereby the lining of the uterus grows on the external uterus as well as the surrounding organs like the bladder and kidneys and endo can result in very very painful periods. Unfortunately the only way to confirm endometriosis's existence is through an internal scope through surgery and the stats for endo are an average diagnosis takes eight years which is crazy the western medical system still has very little information and knows very little about endo as a as a whole um i personally believe endo is a side effect of trauma and stored trauma but that's is just my personal um, intuition and my personal body guiding me to understand these things and working with my clients. Acupuncture can also be an amazing practice for pain and tension relief and unblocking the meridians and energetic pathways which can help your body actually heal itself because your body has its own life force healing energy. Your body wants to be healthy, your body wants to be well, your body wants to be vital. And so what we need to do in the holistic approach to healing is actually removing all the obstacles that prevent our body from being able to heal in the first place. And then someone else recommended to be Chi Ne Tsang. I hope I'm saying this right. Chi Ne Tsang or CNT is an oil-based Chinese massage of the abdominal area and related organs. All our physical and emotional issues stem from the organs and the intestines when they become ingested. Unexpressed emotions and unprocessed traumas are the main causes along with environmental toxins and chemicals, diet, posture, lack of exercise and stress. If you are in Cape Town, please reach out to me for some CNT practitioners that I recommend. I've had CNT before and it's really, really amazing because they work with the fascia of your body and in the fascia is where all the trauma and tension is stored. Self-massage is another favorite, favorite practice of mine. Self-massage is really a beautiful spiritual practice that you can have with yourself. It can be very sensual as well. Um, I have a reel on my Instagram with how to set up this ritual for yourself 
Um, and yeah, it's all about massaging the womb and the abdominal area with love and intention and care on days one to three of your period. And I suggest using coconut oil and lavender or chamomile essential oils. All of these are anti-inflammatory, but use coconut oil as your carrier oil. Yin yoga is an amazing practice for days one to three on your period. I suggest just googling on YouTube, just searching on YouTube yoga for menstruation and you'll find so many amazing videos and practices to connect to your womb space through yoga. And then hypnotherapy could also be an amazing opportunity for you to address and uncover the deeper psychosomatic subconscious belief systems that you are holding towards your womb, your period, and your feminine energy that aren't accessible through the conscious mind. And then there are some amazing herbs and plant allies that we can work with to support our hormonal and reproductive health as women. A few of them are red clover, shatavari, nigella seeds, ashwagandha is an amazing all-rounder and um, stress support, black cohosh roots, ma marjoram, donquia, chastaberry, ladies mantle and rose petals. If you are if you are based in South Africa, ether herbalist apothecary can help you out with tinctures and powders for pretty much all of these um, herbs that I've mentioned, as well as my friend's brand Wild Nettle. She sells red clover, which is an amazing fertility ally that can balance the womb and support the womb in its cycles and this red clover you can make into an infusion which is basically tea that you uh, let brew for 24 hours and then finally working with one-to-one -one with a menstruation coach such as myself will really help you to deepen into your own understanding and your own connection to your womb space and this will really help you to actually have the tools to practically apply cyclical living, womb healing, and yeah, everything that I've mentioned. So I just want to, now that I've mentioned all the supportive things that we can do to help our womb and to heal our period cramps, I just want to quickly mention what unsupportive behavior towards our womb looks like so all these all the so eating inflammatory foods such as refined sugar caffeine um, fizzy drinks highly processed foods seed oils are super fucking bad for you if you are still eating food that is cooked in sunflower oil, canola oil, sesame oil, any of these other oils that aren't coconut, aren't virgin olive, and aren't avocado, I think it is, that's good for you. Yeah, anything other than those three are actually really fucking bad for you and really fucking toxic, especially when you cook with them. Unfortunately, most restaurants um, and eating out, you know, these chains, these restaurants, they will use... Um, cheaper cooking oils such as canola and sunflower just because it's it's more cost effective but on a health level these are these are really so bad for us and then also another one that creates inflammation in the body is alcohol okay alcohol also raises estrogen levels because the liver is too busy processing the alcohol out of your system because your body actually sees alcohol as a toxin and so it chooses to process the alcohol over processing estrogen because the way that your body detoxes estrogen and um, releases excess estrogen is through the liver and so if the liver is too busy processing alcohol it doesn't have the capacity to process estrogen. Being cold will also impact your severity of cramps the week leading up to your period and while you're on your period try to remain warm and eat 
warm, nourishing foods. Avoid smoothies, avoid salads, avoid eating cold food, especially when you're menstruating. And then also being stagnant and sedentary, i.e. not exercising, not moving, not getting out and being active with your body. And then finally, toxic beauty and cleaning products. We live in such a toxic environment. And especially, you know, there's so much pollution, whether it's air pollution or water pollution. Um, There's so much toxins in our modern day life that we are exposed to. And we need to try and live as a non-toxic lifestyle as possible and this starts with really looking at your lifestyle at home and you know looking at your beauty products looking at your cleaning products because all of these chemicals that you are exposing your body to they weaken your body they weaken your immune system they weaken your liver and they just make you not perform and function at an optimal level The phthalates or fragrance chemicals, particles in the cleaning products and beauty products, these are actually the most toxic because the phthalates are actually these microplastic um, compounds that the body reads them as xenoestrogens or fake estrogens. They basically mimic the structure of estrogen in the body. And so this by being exposed to these phthalates, which are actually the compounds that hold the fragrance. They make fragrance last longer. Um, And these phthalates are raising the natural estrogen levels in the body because your body processes them as estrogen because they trick the body into thinking. They are called xenoestrogens. Okay, and there's so much research being done currently about xenoestrogens, about um, phthalates and their level of toxicity on the body. This is why it's so important to use natural cleaning products. Try have um, as clean and natural beauty products as possible. I know this isn't always possible, but because beauty pro- natural beauty products can be very expensive, but try as much as possible. Natural cleaning products are becoming much more mainstream, much more affordable, much more accessible. And yeah, they are available more easily available so we can start using them into our in our households and really yeah, educate the people that you live with. Educate them and ask them, please can you not use such toxic products as a respect to me and my hormones, you know? Um, even your own products, like your own your own deodorants, make sure that you're using a natural deodorant, something that you put on your body every single day. Your own toothpaste, make sure that you're using natural toothpaste or charcoal-based toothpaste. As natural as you can possibly get will benefit your health and your overall hormonal and womb health. So I hope all of this makes sense. If you have any further questions or you would like to book in a one-to-one womb healing consultation with me, you are more than welcome to reach out via DM or just go to my website, sinkinflow.com. Um, and you can book in a session with me. I have recently made available a one hour, 60 minutes once off session for anyone that's not yet ready to commit to a full coaching package with me. And before you commit to any, um, and that is for only 500 Rand. So it's very accessible. And for anyone that does want to work with me, you can also book in a free 30 minutes one-to-one discovery call where we chat about your personal circumstances and how I can support you on your self-healing journey. Okay, so please reach out to me. You don't have to suffer alone anymore. You don't have to just shove it 
down and pretend that this isn't your reality. Your period cramps are not normal. But the best news is that your period cramps are also 100% curable. You do not have to live your whole life suffering with these cramps and suffering with this pain. Okay? Blissful, pain free periods are 100% possible for you, for me, for every single woman. And it's really just how much do we believe that we are allowed to heal? How much space and time and love can we give to ourselves? Can we gift ourselves womb healing? Can we allow ourselves to let go of the stories that we hold around our womb, around our menstruation, around our cycle, around our feminine energy, so that we may actually embrace the power of our womb, embrace the power of our cyclical nature, embrace the power of bleeding, okay? There is so much power that comes from a woman who is embodied in her menstruation. So much power. And another, so please reach out if you would like to do womb healing with me. I have a one month package as well for any woman that is wanting to dive deep into her womb space, heal her relationship to her cycle, get her period back after coming off birth control or just to deepen in her relationship to her womb and increase the amount of pleasure that she can receive because the womb is also deeply linked to our sex life and so the more healing that we do on our womb space the greater our sex life becomes. Sister I am also so excited to announce to you that my latest four-week self-development program, Healing Flow, is now available for you to sign up and register. This course is for any and all women wanting to heal their menstruation and their relationship to their period, because these are deep topics and go so much more into our understanding of ourselves and our feminine energy and our relationship to our blood than we realize. And the best way to do this kind of work is within the supportive container of a program like this. So please sign up if you know that you experience difficulties, challenges, PMS, period cramps, hormonal imbalances, all of the above please sign up. This wisdom is so foundational and so fundamental to being a woman and having a body that bleeds. So yeah, if you feel the call, listen to it. Listen to your intuition. Feel guided by your intuition through this process. The link is in the below description to register. Otherwise, if you have any questions regarding the course, please feel free to send me a DM on Instagram. This is a completely live container and will start on the on the 10th of April. And if you sign up now, you will be eligible for the early bird price of 1,500 Rand, which is only $83. And as we get closer to the start date on the 10th of April, the prices will rise. So if you are considering joining, it would be in your best interest to join as soon as possible to take advantage of the early bird special. So I look forward to welcoming all of you into Healing Flow. May the period positivity party start now and never end. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this episode and engage with all the wisdom that was shared. If you enjoyed this podcast, please remember to leave a review on your podcast platform of choice as this really helps this wisdom reach new people. If you have any questions or queries, please feel free to reach out to me via Instagram DM or send me an email. You can follow me on my personal account on Instagram at Josie, J-O-S-I-E underscore Thorn, T-H-O-R-N-E. Or you can follow Sync and Flow, my business accounts at Sync, that's spelled S-Y-N-C underscore in underscore flow. 
please feel free to reach out with any questions or queries you may have. Otherwise, get in contact to book a free discovery call to start your self-healing spiritual journey today. I look forward to hearing from you and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye for now, loves.